Last week we did a mystery unboxing and it ended up being this Dell Power Edge T420 sent to us from our friends at Unique Box. Now we've had a chance to be able to play around with the server a little bit and I'm going to be showing you what we plan to do with it. At least, you know, we're just using it for a week or so. But if we were to deploy something like this, the reason why and a little bit more about it. So first off, I'm going to start it up. It's been off for a couple days now, but you can hopefully hear it on the microphone. It's a little loud right now, but after a second or so, it will cool down. It really only has one fan on the back of it. And we posted this on the R Home Lab community for Reddit, and we, we posted the photo of it, and we've had some questions about it. So first of all, it is loud when it starts up, but during normal operation and use, it actually isn't using the fan unless you're really doing some heavy load stuff, and so far we haven't been doing that. I'm sure if you were doing a lot of read and write on those 14 hard drives, then probably the CPU would get a little warmer, but you can see it's quiet now. There we go. Fan's off pretty much, I'm pretty sure. Now this is actually the third server that we have here. We have an older, and I really do mean old, HP ProLiant DL380 Gen 3. And then we do have an IBM System X 3250M3, which is much newer. Now for both of those servers, I paid 70 bucks for this. And again, back to that home lab community on Reddit, they were saying that you could probably build it for about 500 bucks. And there was some arguing going back and forth, but we're up here in Canada. And I took a look at the Dell Financial Services Canada website. This, I think they said it like was original retail, was... 2400 bucks or something or it is 2400 and they're selling it for 2000 so this as configured more or less is 2000 um, bucks i think the one that they had online just had one extra feature on it that this one doesn't have but essentially it's pretty straightforward we talked about it in the unboxing it is a intel e5 2407 version 2 2.4 gigahertz xeon processor so it is a newer processor about quarter one 2014 got 24 gigs of RAM and it is a dual socket motherboard so you could throw a second CPU on there and really you can get it up to I think you can go up to about three gigahertz if you were to get one of the faster CPUs that were uh, available at the time and you can also go up to 10 cores so this is a quad core but you can go up to 10 cores if you needed it and really the meat and potatoes are the 14 hard drives on there now this is the third time I've installed Windows Server onto a server recently and I have to say that it was actually one of the easiest installs I've had to do with the HP ProLine. It was a pain in the ass. You have to actually install, to burn a disk to allow you to install something like Windows Server 2003 on it. So it's got it, I just don't use it. Now the IBM server was a huge pain in the ass as well. It uh, required me to get a very specific version of Windows Server 2016 burned onto a USB essentially and programmed properly to be able to work. And then I basically did everything through its remote management console to get it to work and it was a whole pain in the ass as well. Um, you might notice here we've got our dock for my IBM ThinkPad X60 tablet. That hasn't been here for about a week now. The battery died and I took it back to the store that we got it from and uh, it's a whole other store. I don't have it back yet. I don't think I'm going to be getting it back but I was lucky that I was able to get that installed because I was not able to do it on our Mac. This thing though such a breeze, took the USB that we used for the IBM server, plugged it in, configured the RAID, super easy, basically just deleted all the logical volumes. Seems like when it was uh, refurbished by Dell, they essentially took each 14 drive, you know, there's 14 one terabyte hard drives on there, created a logical volume for each one. So I had to delete all 14 of them and then create one RAID 10. And the reason why we went with RAID 10 is we get the performance, obviously, of RAID 0, but the redundancy of RAID 1. So the 14 terabytes of total storage is knocked down to about really just under 7 of usable. And then we've also done something a little bit different too, because obviously we need to install Windows. So you probably can't see it here on the video, but I will show a little clip a little bit closer. We do have a 100 gigabyte setup. We partitioned it just for Windows Server. So 100 gigabytes of that, you know, seven terabyte space is used just for Windows Server. And we've got, it says 6.26 terabytes free on our P drive. Of course, we're gonna call it the P drive. It's the perpetual drive. Now I did test everything. As is, I could pretty much just leave this running. I've set it up on the Mac so I can use the P drive as a shared storage. We did copy over a file and the total storage of this file, the total size was five gigabytes. And on our network here, it wasn't too slow, believe it or not. I think it took a minute, maybe at the most. Now we're using a very, I wouldn't say stupid way, but it's the only way that I can use the network here right now. Behind us is my server rack, it's our network rack. We have a 24 port TP-Link switch, 
and no router. The, the router is upstairs. It's a Airport Extreme pile of garbage. It's an AC router. Essentially, it's upstairs. We've got no physical connection down here, but we have an older Airport Express N, which is connected to it, and then the Ethernet is running from as close as I can get it to proximity to the Airport Extreme, and then the Ethernet runs here into the switch, and then it connects both the iMac and this server, and then the IBM server as well. So it's not ideal. That being said, like I said, I was able to transfer the files over to this relatively quickly. I'm sure it would be quick, uh, probably quicker than the Drobo we have over there because the Drobo I, I bought in 2010, and it can be configured up to 16 terabytes of storage, so four, four terabyte drives, which is about as good as it could get back at the time. Uh, I was using it on my old MacBook Pro, which had a FireWire 800 connection. It was great, but now that I've switched over to the iMac 4K, there is no FireWire anymore. So I'm using USB 2.0 and it's super slow. So if we were actually to deploy something like this, it would be pretty quick. And I have to say that it runs very well. I mean, we haven't really done too much else with it. Again, it's silent. You know, I can barely hear it. It's no louder than any other desktop computer would be if you were running it here. And it really does everything that I would have wanted to. I've got all the drives set up. I could put two more in there if I wanted to. And again, we've had people talk about it on the home lab where they were asking if you could put different, you know, it's a specific drive that you can stick in to the five and a quarter inch drives up here to be able to put four more hard drives in it. So there are more options to be able to expand this. But I really do think as configured, this would get the job done. It is set up the way that I would use it if we had it in production. And I think, as we mentioned, that this could be a pretty good unit for people looking to do some serious backup. You know, seven terabytes is certainly a lot. Now, unless you're doing a lot of video work like we are, I think that would be great for anybody who's got you know, family photos, things like that. They wanna be able to back up off of multiple computers even. They could just transfer it over to there. And I'm sure there's an automated way to be able to do it. But for us, I think it's a really great system and something that I'm hoping to be able to deploy down the road. So I hope you liked this video. Give us a thumbs up if you did. Leave a comment below. And let us know what uh, you would do with a server like this, or let us know if you can build it for cheaper. Again, we you know I like having something like this. I'm kind of an IBM fanboy though, so I would certainly prefer something IBM branded. But if you can build something like this for much cheaper, let us know, and uh, maybe it'll be a project for ours down the road. So until next time, thanks for watching, and take care.